Warning, this video has images of rodent control and giant chocolate eating cockroaches. To make any sense of this video, it was all about setting some traps to catch the rodents who had gnawed into my children's Easter eggs. As you can see, the mouse who's got into these has got a very sweet tooth and possibly has poop laced with aluminium. Well, inside the box there was where the trap was set and I had a video camera on it as well. And we're going to look back at the footage and find out what's going on. And it looks like we've got a winner. Well, let's come in and inspect the box. I've got gloves on because I don't want to have my smell all over this. And the first thing, well, we've got one dead rodent here. What's very interesting is he's been caught between two traps. That's a double stinger, if you ask me. The other thing I see is all traps have been set off, so I can only assume that one trap has gone and triggered the others. And that's why he's been captured between two traps. But what's also interesting is I notice on the egg that the hole is a little bit larger. The hole was much smaller than that when I placed this last night. And it looks like there's been some nibbling away on the edge here. So the big question is, did that rodent there make access to the egg? Or is there other rodents involved? This is the big question and I need to find out. And hopefully the video camera will show all. When I set this box up, and it's probably in another video, I did blue tape these traps down because I know they do jump around a bit when they go off. So there you have it. Two traps has caught one mouse. Let's take a look at the third trap here, the one which did not do any of the killing. But what is very interesting is when I look inside, it looks like the peanut butter has been eaten. So I think the video surveillance footage is going to reveal a lot about last night. Well, it's about 10 p.m. in the evening and this little mouse had inspected around the box many times before he decided to hop in and now he's playing a game of death I can't believe the fact that he's basically on that trap there and he's having a feed of the peanut butter that I put out but as we know his days are numbered and it's going to be very interesting to see what actually goes on when I was upstairs all having a rest and later on having a sleep so this is the same time as the night before when he was eating the egg so he's, he's very much a creature of habit and we're going to probably see a few other little surprises play out as the night continues. He likes that peanut butter. Look at him. He's licking his lips there. Yummy. And it's sort of interesting. You'd be wondering what's going through his mind. He's probably thinking, well, this box is different to last night. There's a different sort of food in here. And I can't find those yummy eggs that I was having the night before. And I know these guys are intelligent. Do not underestimate these little critters. They are very intelligent indeed. And then around three hours later, and it's now about 1am in the morning, he comes back and he's having a little bit of, a bit of a nibble at that third trap and that's the one that I noticed had lost a lot of his food. He is playing a very dangerous game there. Um, he hasn't got his weight fully on that trap. You know it's actually very interesting once you start to see what goes on while you're asleep. And don't underestimate these little guys. They can cause a whole lot of damage if they get into your house. Uh, we've had big problems with uh, mice a couple of years back and it, they are sometimes very very difficult to remove. But he's still getting a feed. And he's getting comfortable with that box, and that's really what I, what I want to have happen. Anyway, he scoots away, and it's a little while until we see him again. Well, it's about two hours on, so it's about 3 a.m. in the morning, and he's come back. There's big intervals between him going away and coming back. And the other question is, are we dealing with the same little critter? And as always, he's very wary before he hops in. They're very, very, you know, inquisitive little critters. Very intelligent. But his luck is about to change. And if you're at all queasy about seeing poor little critters like this getting hammered, well, it's probably a good time to turn away now. But very soon he's going to enter that box and then he's not going to come back out. Well, here he goes. He goes in, he's going to that third trap. I've got the sound up. I can hear crickets outside, he's having a nibble there. Let's just see how this plays out. I'm surprised you can actually basically sit inside that trap and it doesn't go off. Very surprised. But I've used these traps before and I've found them to be very effective. And the way he's eating there, well, it explains why that third trap was, was cleaned off. He's having a good feast there. He's having a whale of a time. And he's going to trap number one. And his days are up. Now the one thing that's got me a little bit perplexed is that the fact that that egg there 
still hasn't been touched. But we came in the morning and we saw that quite a bit of it was eaten away. So I think the video's got a little bit more to say. And what was very interesting at about 5 a.m. in the morning, the cockroach from Chernobyl reappeared. He was there the night before. I'm not sure if the same one. Maybe someone can tell me out there who knows about this stuff. But he's looking fairly sluggish. So he's probably, I don't know, had a big feed or something else before he entered the building. And if anyone says cockroaches don't eat chocolate, well, I've got some news for you. And one thing that's really good at cleaning up giant cockroaches is giant spiders. And at around three hours after Elvis number one left the building, Elvis number two has entered the building. So I'm dealing with another rodent that I've got to clean up and get rid of. It was actually very good to be able to nab one, and now I'm dealing now I know I'm dealing with, well, more than one. And this little guy is having a good sniff around. It's funny that peanut butter, he actually spends a lot of time trying to get into the traps. Maybe he's trying to get his buddy out. Hey buddy, buddy, wake up buddy, buddy, you're not talking to me. Anyway, he scampers around and I think he works out that he realises that the best meal in that box is that chocolate egg. And I'll be honest here, to me those two rodents look basically identical. I'm sure someone out there will be able to tell one from the other. And all this is playing out at about 6am in the morning. So we're just before the sun comes up, you might as well say it's still dark outside. And it's probably the last little opportunity that these guys would come out to have a feed. And I think what we get to see here is just how much and how fast these guys can eat. And there was a lot of damage done to the eggs that were got into a few nights back. And now I'm starting to understand why. They certainly can devour a fair bit of chocolate in a very short time. Well, I hope I've helped you if you've got any problems with little rodents. I certainly looked on YouTube and there is a whole range of videos which speak on the subject and show different types of traps. The real popular one seems to be the bucket with the, we'll call it the jar which spins in the middle on the piece of wire and a little rodent will go along to the jar, nibble on the food and it spins and he falls into a bucket of water and unfortunately dies. But these guys can cause havoc. Let's say he moved up from my garage and he decided well the next food stop for him is going to be inside the house. It can really cause a whole lot of heartache especially for my wife who is in fear of these little critters. Well if that first one was called Elvis, what would we call this one? Elvis number two doesn't quite suit this guy. You can only ever have one Elvis. Well I'm pretty sure in another night I'll be able to capture him. He's very comfortable coming to the box and having a feed. We've established there are two of these. And if you've got any ideas and suggestions for capturing little rodents like this, I'd love to know. And actually another half an hour later, well, another little mouse turns up. Is it the same one that we saw before? That's the problem. I've got to try and establish how many am I dealing with. Because it seems like any one mouse comes to the box at a time. Are they playing like tag? Where one runs back with a bit of foil and passes it to the next and then the new mouse runs up? Well I'm pretty sure that in time the camera's going to tell me. And I put the mouse out there because it wasn't killed by any pesticides and look who's feeding on the mouse. Ah beautiful to see. They make a beautiful little dinner for the birds in the neighbourhood. I thought the kookaburras might have come down and cleaned up the little mouse. It looks like the Maggie's have got first chop. Now we're going to get a Maggie who's addicted to chocolate. Yummy chocolate flavoured mouse. A delicacy. Ooh. She's actually up in the tree there with that mouse and a beak. She's probably looking out for a young. It's autumn time here and the youngsters are now well and truly grown up. But I'm sure the mother Maggie is very keen to keep feeding her young. The birds around here must love me. If it's not giant spiders they're getting for dinner, it's little tiny rodents. Thanks for watching the video and I hope it helps if you've got any rodent problems. And bye for now.